Hey, what's up? I'm going to show you how to do Android development from the command line without the stupid, bloated um, Android Studio. Because if you're like me, you pretty much, I'll just put it nicely and say that you really don't like big bloated IDEs and whatnot. Not that there aren't a few advantages in some circumstances to using Android Studio, but it's just, I think the disadvantages far outweigh it, and it just, I can't live with that on any of my machines or virtual machines. It's just, it's way too bloated. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can uh, just use the command line tools to develop Android applications. And in doing so, I'm going to go ahead and touch go back to Windows XP even though uh, of course this recording is happening in towards the end of 2021 but uh, that being said I imagine maybe there's some people that have some old XP machines or whatever but anyway what I show with Windows XP will still apply to newer machines as well but I'm just showing that as sort of the lowest common denominator so that um, you know that those people who might be kind of weird like me and be interested in going back and dusting off some older stuff and using it uh, they'll be included as well and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to do it for like if you are running like a continuous integration continuous uh, deployment type of a pipeline I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty details of that part but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to to also install it on a Linux virtual machine which uh, will have a lot of overlap for people who do want to run it in the cloud on a cloud service, so to speak, on a Linux virtual machine. Um, but I'm also going to go with a low common denominator there as well, and I'm going to use a Debian 7 virtual machine. So Debian 7 didn't quite have the newer uh, C libraries, so it can't. It, it requires a little bit older version as well of some of the tools. And not only does uh, Windows XP and Debian 7 require, you know, some older versions of these tools, but just developing at the command line, um, being able to create projects from scratch at the command line and stuff like that, that also requires older tools. Because at a certain point, uh, several years back, they stopped allowing that to happen and said, hey, you've just got to use Android Studio, which I think is completely ridiculous. So we basically have to roll everything kind of go with the older tool set and then I'm going to kick those back even one more notch or two to make sure they work on these lower common denominators. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started right here. What I have is my Linux virtual machine, once again my Debian 7 virtual machine. So all this should apply for Debian 8, 9, 10 and so on. Um, with those systems, with the newer systems, you can also, you can follow what I'm doing here with any of the newer systems, Windows or Linux, you can follow what I'm doing here. This will get you the old tool set so that you can actually create the projects from scratch. And then you can update that tool set. And in theory, you should be able to uh, run the modern commands and develop for the brand newest Androids as well as the older Androids and still be able to create from scratch at the command line. That's the key thing is being able to create that project from the command line which of course was pulled out so that being said one more note is that um, if you want to develop for Android 8.0 and newer that would require the uh, Android uh, SDK 20 version 27 and higher and it would also require for Windows it would require Windows 10 with April 2018 update and newer if you want to take advantage of the AMD uh, Ryzen optimizations that make the emulators run really fast you'll need the uh, version 27.3.8 or higher SDK tools um, and you'll need to allocate at least probably a couple gigs of RAM to each virtual machine I don't recommend going that route you know I imagine uh, most people probably have a couple Android phones laying around you probably have a newer one maybe if you're into having a cell phone and stuff like that so you could just kind of use that for your development machine for the the newer versions of Android because the uh, the virtual machines just tend to take up a lot of resources but if you have a, a powerful machine and enough resources and everything then that that's definitely an option and you can 
test things out in various screen sizes. I'm not going to get into any of the details on that. This is just literally going to be how to like spit out a working APK and uh, uploading it to a device or testing it or anything further is going to, you're going to be on your own or I'll do another tutorial on those kind of specifics. So what we need to do in this Linux machine, um, this is Debian, Ubuntu is really similar. So if you don't have the tools, you'll probably want to run a sudo app get install and get ant um, wget unzip open jdk and on this old one it would be open jdk 7 uh, something like that your your mileage is going to vary on different systems just look and dig into your uh, package manager and search through what packages are available and nano for is pretty handy for editing text files at the command line gives you some syntax highlighting and whatnot so you'd run that command i already have all that stuff so i'm just gonna not do that um so wget will allow us to get stuff from the um download files without having to open up a web browser and this url which is pretty easy to memorize is dl.google.com um I think you can access it with HTTPS or HTTP and then you just do a slash Android on that and for the SDK you'll just type Android dash SDK and what we're going to do here is the newest SDK that you can get I believe that still includes the older SDK manager that doesn't require the Android Studio stuff it would be uh, r24.4.1 dash linux and this linux could be replaced with windows or mac os x i believe um dot zips for the windows and mac and a dot tgz for linux and it would be like oh excuse me dot tgz just like that but what i'm going to do since i'm of course going with the lowest common denominator i'm going to have to get slightly older tools because that one requires a little bit newer c libraries so I'm going to go back and I'm going to get the 2302, which for most intents and purposes, it's uh, this should be plenty anyway. So regardless, you if you're worried about all the technicalities, just follow along specifically with me and you should do all right. So that should download that file. And there you can see it's uh, trying to download it, but I'm going to hit control C and break out of it because if you look right here, that red file, I've already got it. So that dot one file, it was trying to download a second copy. It's just a really big file. So I just went ahead and pre-downloaded it. So once it's downloaded, then uh, what I did is I just went into my home folder, which you can get there just by typing like CD or something by itself. It's that tilde folder represents your slash home slash username. I can do a PWD and you can see it's like that. And then what I did was I made a directory called opt opt. And that's a, I just kind of like mirror folders that are normally out of the main system root directory. I'll just kind of like mimic that in my own folder. So stuff that goes in ops, it, opt is usually like optional programs that don't necessarily follow that uh, Linux, Unix kind of hierarchy. They're just, they're more like a Windows program where everything's just sort of in its own folder, all the help files the program blah 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 just everything to do with the programs in one folder so that's where i'm going to put this stuff there and what i can do is i can just do a tar x uh, extract verbose with the file name of android da, 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 and i'll go ahead and hit enter that's going to create a folder called android sdk linux with that whole sdk dumped out into it so now i can go cd android Linux, and then you can see, uh, let me make sure that that's up high enough where it can be seen. So you can see there's the readme, there's add-ons, there's platforms, and there's tools. The uh, add-ons is empty, and the um, platforms is empty. So really, it's just a readme and a tools folder. So if we look in the tools folder, we can see there's a bunch of cool little scripts and programs and stuff like that. The one we really care about is this Android one right here. And that's the one that's sort of uh, deprecated and stripped down in the newer SDK tools. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run tools. You can uh, CD into that folder or just do like I'm doing. Actually, what I'll do first is I'll export Android 
home and I'll set it equal to home my username and then uh, opt Android SDK just like that and then if we were to CD into Android home we should be right where we're at home Vinay's opt Oh, you know what? Um, I need to do one more dash Linux on there, just like that. Okay, so now if we CD into it, okay, there we go. Good thing I checked that out. Okay, so that file, if I would have deleted that tar file in the folder just under me, then I shouldn't have had that problem with the tag, tab completion. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and run from this directory. I'll call that file in the next directory up in that tools directory and say Android. And then what we're going to do is a list SDK. What you can do if you want is you can just do like a help or something like that. But I'm just trying to breeze through because I'm already somewhat familiar with all that. So we're going to do all in an extended format and that should be what we want. So what it's going to do, it's going to contact the servers, of course. It's going to download some XML files that have the information about the available packages. Download those, process them, spit them out on the screen right there to us. And then I can hold shift and hit page up a zillion times here or just hold it down for a second. Come on, thing. Oh, too far. Okay, so there's all the downloading those XML files. And then right here we can see we have the core things that once you get more familiar the, these will seem pretty obvious, but you have your tools, which is, I think that's basically, that's what we already have. It, that's the SDK tools. We don't want to update that for me. Um, for you, if you're most likely probably using a newer version of uh, Linux distribution, so you could probably go ahead and update that to something like 24 or even 25 should work. It should leave the, um, the old school stuff in place and just update your other stuff but if it doesn't then just delete your folder come back here and follow this and start back over um, platform tools is pretty key on the linux version at least with this particular sdk tooling and stuff it only wants to update us to 23.0.1 which is actually good we don't want to get too new of platform tools and the windows version as you'll see in a little bit it's going to try and offer us two new versions so we don't need this one we need this and it's okay to let it automatically update us to this version so we don't need to take any special notes here are the build tools um i'm going to go ahead and stick you could probably get away with those build tools even if you're going old school like me but if we come down here i'm going to go with this uh 19 this is that KitKat android 4.4 era these were the build tools that line up with that so i'm going to go ahead and that's what i i don't know if i mentioned it but i'm going to target android 4.4 which to my knowledge is uh is the lowest common denominator for the google play store at the moment we'll be able to build stuff all the way back for like android 1.5 if we wanted to and uh following what i'm doing here we should be able to also target Android 6, like all the features in Android 6 if we wanted. So basically 1.5 through Android 6.0, we should have completely covered. If you want the newer Androids, of course, you'll just want to follow what I'm doing and then run the updates to get the newer stuff. But that being said, these pro even if you target like Android 4.4, um, in theory, that application st should still run on like Android 11, say. It just... Um, if you're taking advantage of some specific feature that's only in a really new Android device, then you would need to go that route. So we'll go ahead and do build tools 19.1 KitKat and uh, scrolling down here. If you want the documentation, you could take note of that. This is, I believe, Android 6 API 23 documentation. That's all the documentation offline, the HTML files and whatnot. So that's pretty handy. It's a lot quicker than looking at it online. And uh, the, the new online stuff tends to lean towards the very newest Android versions. This will kind of stop you at that happy medium. Okay, and then these are the platforms. Android 23, like I said, is going to be, excuse me, Android 6.0. We're going to go with Android 19. For that happy medium uh, 4.4 KitKat to be able to target that platform. 
And of course, as you can see, you can come down here, Android 7, whatever, you can get really old and you can install multiple target platforms. A lot of this stuff, besides the core tooling, um, you can install multiples of. These are samples. So uh, the sample files that came from that era. So of course the samples 19 would be from the KitKat era. And uh, these are system images for if you're going to use an emulator and whether you can look at the details, this one's Android 29, this one's Android 29 with the Play Store and the Google APIs. So variations on that. Um, I'm not going to get into any of that right now. But anyway, scrolling down here. It's real slow. Okay. Uh, I think let me go back up and make sure. Yeah, then there's the extra Google APIs, which me personally, I'm not interested in. I don't, I'm not into that. You know, I just go with the core Android stuff that you could use for, you know, developing for Amazon devices or whatever you want. But if you want, it's all there, all that Google Analytics junk, that tracking and tracing junk. Um, this one right here is probably worth taking note of. That's the Android support repository. This is only going to work with the newer devices, to my knowledge. Um, I think it's coincides with the Android X, Jetpack, all that kind of stuff. It's what the Android support libraries became. I personally use the old school Android support library, which I will cover. So anyway, all that being said, what we can do now is instead of listing the stuff available, we can update SDK and then we want to do a no UI. So this is all stuff you could just incorporate into some simple like bash scripts and be able to, um, spin all this stuff out on a machine, you know, on like a virtual machine in the cloud, if you're wanting to do the continuous integration style thing. Or of course, if you have your own virtual machine on your local system, you can do it like this too. Um, I'm gonna do all and then filter by, we're gonna do platform dash tools, comma, and we're gonna do build tools, build, uh, is it dash tools? And then we're going to do version 19.1.0 and then uh, Android 19 for the target platform. Oops. And of course you could do Android, you know, 10 or whatever other platforms you want to be able to specifically target right there. But of course this should still work with um, newer and older platforms. Okay. And then if you want to do the samples, you could do like sample 19 too. Okay, so there's, I believe it should work with older. If it doesn't, then go ahead and install an older one and target that platform as well. It's been some years since I've done Android programming, so I just went in and did a cram course on myself with this stuff and thought I'd share it. So I'm going to hit enter. So I've got the Android update SDK, no UI, all filter platform tools, build tools dash 19.1.0 and Android dash 19 for the platform hitting enter. We could have just typed tools slash Android and it would have given us a GUI to do this manually. I'll show that in just a second. Um, but I just want to show this for people who are trying to script at the command line. Oh, right here. I forgot about this. So I'm going to hit no and tell it I don't accept this license. So what you can do is I hit up to get that command back. Um, actually, let me clear the screen to make sure it's up high enough to be seen. So I can hit up and get that command back. I'm gonna hit the home key and I'm gonna type echo Y and then pipe that. So this is gonna send in the yes key. It's gonna echo the Y key. So that's what you'd wanna do right there to uh, bypass having to answer yes to that question. So you can see right there, just passed it. Just said, do you accept the license? And behind the scenes, it hit yes. So it's gonna take it just a minute to download and unpack this stuff right here. But we're getting pretty good speed. Oh, one more it looks like. So on your continuous integration system, if it has to download and unpack these every time, of course, this is going to be a little sort of constant delay. But if you can at all have cache these downloads, then that would obviously be pretty beneficial. It's just about done. It's installing that part. And then 
probably less than a minute we should get the command prompt back all right there it is so now what i can do is i can type just well did i add that to my path yet android no i didn't so now would be a good time so on linux we'll type export uh well before the, i do that i'll get the auto completion to kick in so i'll do home your name's um, my username opt Android SDK Linux and then tools. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export path equals and then we'll put the old path in and a colon and then go to the end of that. So this is going to add the tools which has that Android program. Then I'm going to do another colon. Um, and I'm going to copy this into the clipboard and paste it. So that I have it again, and then I'm going to make it say platform tools, which gives us ADB and the other essentials, the rest of the essentials. And then if you did update your tooling, you would want to go ahead and do that one more time and then add the bin folder because that's where the newer SDK manager and some of that stuff would go. Um, it's pointless for me to do it here because I'm not going to update that tooling, but I'll just go ahead and do it for illustrative purposes. So now if I type Android, it's going to automatically dig into that tools folder, find it, and it's going to pop up this graphical user interface, which, like I said, we could have skipped that whole command line thing other than extracting the X SDK tools and just ran Android and been here. So this is the missing, one of the key missing components of the newer Android SDKs that try and force you to use the Android Studio. They've redone this and embedded it into Android Studio, and it's really clunky in there. Um, or at least it was back in the day when I used first was using it. But some it, what this is going to do is every time you load it, it's going to try and automatically check certain stuff. That's pretty much no bueno. Um, so if you you know be very careful about what you do, let it update. It's going to try and pull in the latest preview of Android, like the brand newest you know whatever Android system it is. It's going to try and pull in that stuff. That's going to potentially you know probably hundreds of megabytes, if not gigabytes. And right here, it's going to pull in. So it's pulling in the like beta Android, and then it's pulling in like the brand newest Android that's stable. Um, I have no interest in any of those. So what I do is I uncheck this updates new thing. And then that basically shows you the core stuff you have installed. So we can see right there, we have the platform tools installed. We have the, uh, the build tools. And then we have that uh, KitKat platform targeting. But anyway... Then I recheck that box, and when I recheck it, it shows us all the new stuff again, but it's deselected. So we don't have to worry about that. You can see down here, it's not trying, it would say like install five packages or something. It's not trying to do that. So we can ignore this update. We already have the platform tools, which are essential. We need those. We have the build tools, those are essential. We need them. We basically only have the essentials. And as you can see, we have the one SDK platform right there. We could even check this box if we wanted. And then you can see right there, it's installed one package. I know it's hard to see with my uh, particular, um, what do you call it, theme, my dark theme. But it's checked. That's if we wanted to install those samples. Instead of at the command line, we can install them right here in the GUI. But I'm going to leave those deselected for now. And then you can come down here. There's all the older Androids if you need to target those platforms. And there's extras, the support repository. I believe that brings in like 330 more megabytes. Um, that, of course, is the newer way to offer back compatibility into your applications. But I believe it needs at least Android 4 or higher, if not 4.4 and higher. And I'm kind of a weirdo, so I like to develop for like Android 2. So that's just not really in my ballpark. Um, these things, take note of, they're not compatible with Linux. But anyway, that's all that stuff. I'm not even going to change it. I'm just going to close it. I just want to show that. So now we can just go to my source folder. I have a source, and then I have an Android in here. And uh, then I'm going to make a directory called my app. And then I'm going to CD into it. And then you can see it's totally empty. So uh, I'll clear the screen here. It's totally empty and what we'll do is this is one of those other things that's missing to be able to create a bare bones android program you know like the uh, skeleton program basically from scratch just double checking that i actually have you know what in that path command 
one thing that I forgot to add was uh well I don't know if I need to I need to add and okay not on Linux I don't need to add anything else to that but on Windows I would so I've got all that where am I on my little scratchy notes here so what we're gonna do is um Android list targets and it should just have the one target. There it is. Because I only installed Android 19. But if you installed others, of course, they'd be there. So that will just give you a gauge of what you can use. And if you have problems, you might want to refer back to that. So Android 19 is the one that we have. And then what we can do is Android create um, project. And I'm just going to hit enter to see what our available command line options. And you can see what it needs. It needs a name. It needs a target. Um, it needs a path, it needs a package, and it needs an activity. The Gradle stuff's kind of optional. So you can see right here, error, the parameters target, path, package, activity must be defined. So I'll go ahead and clear out that again, and I'll get back to that Android create project. So we'll do target, and then Android 19, and then give it a name. Call it my app to match the folder and all that stuff and declare a main activity activity and what else we need a path it's required and since I'm already in the folder I can just do a dot which represents this current folder and then a package is also required um, they recommend reverse domain names I think it's stupid honestly but anyway it's just got to be a unique name um, I'll go ahead and just do it like that for now and then hit enter okay so now you can see it just created all that stuff if I do an LS um, you can see it just created all that stuff right there you got your Android manifest the bin folder is empty until we compile the lib folder is empty because we haven't thrown in any third-party libraries the resource folder is a uh, that's where you have your drawables, your layout, your values, which are like your strings and stuff. It's pretty handy if you want to internationalize and be able to, you can just have all your strings right in that values thing and have multiple different languages and stuff. And then the source, of course, is it's going to have just the main activity because that's the only thing in the skeleton app. And that's what the code for that looks like. So what we can do while we're in this, um, our applications root folder here is we can just type ant debug like you might be familiar with if you built anything in the command line back in the day and there it goes it's on its way and since I'm using this lowest common denominator tool set I only have to have Java 7 if you're using the newer stuff you'll want Java 8 and there you can see build successful so if we go into the bin folder now then we can see that uh, Oops, uh, where is it? Right here. There's the output after it's been aligned and all that. So that's that. So that shows you from, you know, from basically from scratch how to create a skeleton app at the command line and to uh, get it to compile and everything. So that should be easily adaptable to a simple script that can be used in a continuous, uh, continuous integration system. All right. So... All that being said, I'm going to get out of this one here, log out, shut down, and then I'm going to come over here and fire up an old Windows XP virtual machine. It's going to take just a minute if you bear with me. And we're going to do a similar thing with the XP thing. I'm going to just go the visual route with the XP. Of course, it's virtually identical at the command line um, adjusted for minor adjustments for Windows syntax and whatnot. So just reviewing my notes right here. But it's a little bit tricky, um, which I'll show you. It's not a big deal, but it's just a little bit tricky to do a couple of the things. So we're going to need the Android SDK. We can go ahead and go with that 24.4.1 version then we're going to have to uh, manually download the platform tools because, as we'll see, if we try and just use the uh, the ones available, it, it won't be a good choice. 
Okay, so what am I doing here? So what I can do is I can open a browser and I can go to that same URL. Android and then uh, so it's dl.google.com slash Android slash Android SDK underscore R24.4.1 and then a dash windows dot zip and then that's going to let us download it but as you can see I already have it so we don't have to take a bunch of extra time on my end to do that again and then the other thing I should have probably save that to the clipboard so the other thing we'll need is the google.com slash android uh, slash repository which all, everything but the SDK tools are going to be in this repository subfolder repository and then we need to get platform tools and then we need the r23.1.0 which should work for most purposes. Um, like I said, if you don't need a super new Android to target super new Android stuff. Actually, I think, yeah, this will be the ADB tools and stuff. So if you need features that are in the very newest ADB tools and you're using a newer version of Windows, you can uh, bump that up or just do dash latest instead of this underscore R23.1.0. But this is a version that's pretty close to the... Uh, Android KitKat era, and it also is the newest version that will work under XP. So it'll be that, and then a uh, what is it? A dash windows dot zip. Okay, so that link worked, and as you can see, I already have that downloaded right there as well. And we also need to go ahead and grab Apache Ant. Um, with the old stuff, Apache Ant 1.8 should be fine, but uh, might as well just grab Apache Ant um, 1.9. It's like, you know, there's 1.10 and 1.9. Just grab this 1.9 for Windows. You grab this top one right here. And then in Linux, you'd use your package manager like I showed previously. But yeah, you click that, and then you can see I've already got it right there, 1.916, so I'm going to cancel that. Okay, so that's how you get those things. So now if I do... Um, this, how does it let me open the folder that it's in? Show and folder. Okay, so we can go to the uh, Android SDK one like that. Double click that. And then it's Android SDK Windows, blah, blah, blah. So we'll extract that to the C folder or wherever you want, wherever you have permission to read and write and execute files from. Could be your home folder. So that will take just a minute. You can see it's 315 megabytes. And as long as we have version 22.3 at least, then that should be compatible with all the tooling if for some reason you want to roll back and get an older version. And for those platform tools we also just grabbed, we need to get at least revision 19 or higher to be in the ballpark that we want. All right, so that's finally done there. And then we can go ahead and extract Apache Ant too. And it's in that long folder. So what I do is I just dig in there, select all of this, extract it to C Ant. And I've already, I'll just, I'll just hit yes to all. I've already extracted it there. Probably should have just hit cancel so it wouldn't take so much time. But anyway, that can finish in the background. And then the last little tricky thing we've got to do um, which I can actually show you why real quick. If we go here, close that, close that out, open up a command prompt, and then uh, what we'll do is I'll go ahead and, uh, well, so we can go CD into that Android SDK Windows folder, do a DIR, and we can see there's the AVG manager, the SDK manager, but we can still follow that same, you know, sometimes those obviously aren't there in the newer versions and whatnot, but um, I think you can get the 25.2.5 tools and they won't have the SDK manager GUI, but they'll still allow you, to my knowledge, to create um, a skeleton program from the 
command prompt. So anyway, just in case there's a couple people doing that scenario, I'll just follow the same old way that we've been doing to maintain consistency. So we'll do the tools. Um, Android is going to be there. And if I just run it, just like on Linux, it will give us the GUI. This one, of course, isn't using the dark theme. Um, here's where you can manage your, you can create emulators if you want. You can uh, manage the add-on sites right there. You can see I uncheck everything except for the uh, top Google one and the Android system images. You might want to have, uh, if you, this Intel hacks them, if you have one of those C Intel CPUs that's compatible with that, it would make the emulators run faster. But I just, you could basically uncheck most of those unless you want to, you need stuff specific for any of that other stuff there. Um, you could add Amazon's Kindle Fire stuff in here if you want it to automatically look for that. And then what else? So there's options. Ooh, this download cache, I don't really like to use that. So I just uncheck that and hit clear. I don't like preview tools. That's weird. It didn't used to have all those. And then uh, you can force HTTPS if you want right there. Uh, checking or unchecking that might help if you're getting some errors accessing stuff. So same thing as before, it's going to try and update the tools to this 2525 and everything. Um, you got to be careful if you are using XP. If you're not, you could probably be pretty safe to go ahead and let it update some of that stuff. But um, if you're using XP, you cannot update the platform tools to this um, 2906, which isn't installed yet, but that's the only version of platform tools that even gives you the option. Those binaries are like 64-bit, not XP compatible. So once again, I'm going to unselect and reselect that one, and um, that will uncheck everything. And then what I'm going to do is, and I'll go ahead and tell it to show me obsolete. Well, for now, I'll leave that off. But then you can see everything's deselected. If I scroll down to the bottom of that section, Android SDK Build Tools 19.1, that's that uh, KitKat era. So I'm going to install those. If for some reason some time goes by and that one fades off of the list, you can click to show you the obsolete. And you can see right there, it just dumped down a whole bunch all the way back to Android Build Tools 17. There's the 19 up there. But anyway, just so you know. Um, and then same thing, virtually identical. You could do the support repository thing if you want. You're, I don't know how well that will work on XP. The Google USB driver you might want to get. Um, that's about the only things I would say for sure out of there you'd want to get. And then we could do this um, Android... SDK platform for 4.4 there get that so that we can target that one We've got the build tools, but the build tools if we were to try and install these two packages right now You can see it's trying to bring in three because it's saying hey we need build tools needs this platform tools and It's gonna bring in version 29, which is no Bueno, so what we're gonna do here is uh, We'll go ahead and pop back open that browser and do a download google.com um slash android and then repository and then what we want to do is that i already did do the platform tools so you do the platform tools um r23 1 .0, that's right so that one is right here and then you can see platform tools i'll highlight that and just extract and i hit the down key There it is, that Android SDK Windows. Otherwise, you can hit the triple dot, browse to it, click on it, OK. And just make sure it's C, Android SDK Windows. And then it will make this folder in there. And that folder has all that fancy stuff like ADB and everything, SQL Lite 3, whatever, fast boot. Um, so that will give us those, an those tools that we need. So now if I come back in here, hit the up arrow, launch that Android GUI again, then we can see this time it's showing the Android SDK platform tools 23.1. One other thing I did forget to mention is that we can go to dl.google.com Android repository and then uh, what else did we need in here? We could get support and we could get r23.2.1 I think it's, I don't remember. I don't think it's dash windows. I think it's just zip. Bam. There it is. So this is that support library, 
we will save that. That's the old school support library. You could just do R19.1 and be done with it, but this one is a little newer. It should have some of the material uh, stuff so that you could like give Android 4.4, for example, a little bit of the material look. Um, I'm going to open the zip file up. You can see there's support there. We'll extract that. And I've already typed it in down here. So it needs to go in this, the Android SDK Windows Extra Android folder. So the keyword is, it's in the Extras folder, Android subfolder, and then there's going to be the support subfolder under all of that. That's the little secret location for that. Then if I close all this out and uh, refresh this, then it should show at the very bottom down here. That support library, I think, is only like 10 megabytes com compressed. And the 19.1, I think, is only like 5 megabytes. So I'm going to uncheck that, recheck that. And I'm also going to, well, if I just scroll down there, you'll see you don't, oh, there it is, actually. I thought I would have to check obsolete to see it, but apparently I don't. Um, there it is, 23.2.1 Android support, or Android support library installed. So we've got that. We've got the platform tools, so that dependency is there. So now we can install the build tools 19.1. We can come down here and grab the Android, uh, oops, um, SDK platform and just install those two packages. And I accept the licenses. See, now it's only trying to bring in the two because the, the platform dependencies or uh, platform tools is satisfied. You can also do the N NDK. That's the same thing as the uh, Android, you know, doing that whole, while that's going, I'll go ahead and just type it in over here again. So it's, uh, it would be a download google.com Android repository, and then you do an Android uh, dash NDK dash R13B if you want it to work on Windows XP. Of course, there's newer versions. That one really will get you some traction. I think that will compile libraries all the way up to target um, the Android 7.0. So Windows and then a dash x86.zip. Does that do it? Bam! So that I, it would give us a 404 error if that wasn't correct. So there you can see that's probably close to 600 megabytes. So I'm not going to download it, but I just want to show that that's possible. Um, you can do the same thing with docs, to, but you can also just use the SDK manager to get the docs. I don't think we can use the SDK manager to uh, pull in the NDK otherwise. So that's how you'd want to do that. And this is still, it's just unzipping, doing the final touches on that there. So I'm just taking a glance at my notes here to make sure that I'm ready to rock as soon as that's done. So we've got Ant. Of course, you'll need the Java JDK if you don't have that. Um, you can get away, like I said, with seven with the old tools, but if you might be using, you know, if you plan on updating your tools, you want to get the JDK 8. Um, on XP, you can still, uh, I know there's a lot of people that think that JDK is not compatible version 8 with uh, Windows XP, but it actually is. So I recommend JDK 8 update 121 from the Oracle archive. That's what I'll be using right now to uh, get that compatibility. And like I said, Ant version 1.9. Okay, any minute now. Should be done. It's just refreshing itself, I think. So, uh, what else is there here? Yeah, and with the newer stuff, there's that tools slash bin folder. That's where you'll find like the SDK, the quote unquote SDK manager for the newer stuff. Um, you can use that for continuous builds on, and that even seemed to work on Windows XP, I only did some really light preliminary stuff with it, but uh, yeah, that's what you would probably use for um, continuous integration, and that's all it does is that style of building. You can't create a project from scratch with it like you can using these methods. You still have to have a 
you know, you either have to have another machine doing what we're doing here to create your skeleton projects, or you'd have to use the Android Studio. Okay, I don't know what's taking it. Okay, <laughs> I guess I just had to get fed up with it. All right, so now all of that stuff should be good. So we can go ahead and set the path, update the path to be equal to the, um, the old school path. We'll have that in there and do a semicolon. And then we're going to add... Um, You'd add like, let's see here, I'll just go ahead and echo the path so we can see what's going on with it. So this one has some old school Visual C Toolkit 2003 and MASM, you can ignore that, Python. Um, what does it have? So it doesn't have Java. Let's see if I do a Java minus version, if that gives, so that doesn't give us anything so cool. So what we need to do is we need to do path or you can do like a set path um, equals percent path percent which will echo all that old path you see right there that I did a semicolon I'm going to add to it we're going to add program files um, we can use the short name for program files actually program one java um, jdk 1.8.0 or 1.7.0 underscore and then you probably have like 1.7.080 but uh, we're going to do 1.8.121 because that's what I have. And then the bin folder under that. And then a semicolon. And uh, what else am I missing here? Then we want to add the uh, C Android SDK Windows tools. And then we want to add the C Android SDK Windows platform tools. And then we could even add the C android sdk windows tools and then bin which of course i don't have yet but just to illustrate if you did update those tools you could do that and so now if we do a java minus version we get java and then if we do a java c minus version we get that oh you know what i forgot to add to it and then a semicolon and a c ant bin on there okay and then we can do an ant version or I think it's ant minus version there we go so we've got ant and uh, what else am I missing here that's all of that stuff so similar thing now we've got the tooling all set up we can go into a source folder Android um, create that my app directory CD into it this one's already there, so I'm just going to delete it all. D, uh, I'll just back up one and say RM. Uh, get rid of everything, then do a make directory, my app, and then CD into it. And now it's empty. Okay, so now we can do a same thing. Android list targets. And it should just have the one again because that's the only one I installed. You know the story. And then this time we're going to do Android create project. We're going to target um, Android 19. And name it my app. And assign that activity activity to a main activity and the path we're already in the folder so we can just give it a dot package same thing something unique and hit enter to allow it to create that package looks like it all went well so we can now take a look there's all our stuff that uh so if we do the android manifest xml there it is you can come in here touch it up add min and target android versions if you want or whatever align some of the spacings off sometimes stuff like that do all that save it um same story as before your uh all your stuff is going to be your bin folder should be empty your libs folder should be empty the res is going to be your resources and the source is the source just like before so from right here in this um the root directory of the project, once again, you can just do ant debug. And if all goes well, it will do all that. 
recompiling. Now it's dexing and then it's crunching the PNGs. That went really quick. And we can see right here, build, mark that out, uh, build successful. That's what we want to see there. So then if we go into the bin folder, we can see right here we have at just over 37K is uh, my app debug APK. So there it is. You can start developing from the command line like that. We can go into this uh, source folder and uh, there we can see that main activity file. We can open that file up. We can make edits to it right here and change change whatever we want. We're ready to rock from the command line and not have to deal with Android Studio. One very last quick thing I want to point out here is that you can, uh, there's two websites that you can go to if Firefox will ever open up at the very last minute here. Come on, Firefox. <laughs> All right. So, one of them is android-doc.github.io. And the other one is Android Doc MIT, I guess. So this one, you can see this, these aren't the, uh, it's the official Google documentation, but it's more like a backup of it because it's open source, Creative Commons. So of course you can go to developer.android.com or whatever and access the most current stuff and it's relatively helpful. But this one, coincidentally, Android 6.0, which if you do use that old school tooling that we installed without updating it, this is your target right here. And this is really a happy medium because this gets you into material. It gets you... Um, all that kind of stuff, right? But it still has a lot of referencing. You can click develop right here. So the 6.0 stuff I think is missing most of the design documentation and stuff like that. But you can go in here and you can do like training, API guides, whatever, all this stuff. And it's going to get you relatively new, but it's still going to have a lot of stuff that uh, still covers a lot of the old school stuff without being to Android Studio specific, just follow the command line instructions. And I believe it even assumes the older school tooling like we're using to be able to create from scratch at the command line. Let's look at it real quick. Build your first app. Let me zoom this back just a little bit. So build your first app. Of course, they do talk about Android Studio, but um, let me see if that MIT stuff. Yeah, this it's literally stuff. Stuff.mit.it edu da, 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 android docs so this is the other one this is even older this is like the android 4.2 documentation and it uh so that's an alternative it's even older school which i honestly prefer the only thing that you might miss out here is like the card material design stuff um the, of course all the development stuff's there but you can also come over here and this is the android 4 era of the styling patterns like which I thought was way cooler than that flat stuff. So, and anyway, a lot of it, regardless, like the spacing on stuff, a lot of that still applies to, even if you're trying to go for a more modern look, has stuff like these rich notifications that started in Android Jelly Bean. But anyway, there's all that. So if you do want to get at the slightly older documentation without downloading it all, that's an option there. So creating your thing, there's the Android Studio way. And then if you scroll way down here, creating at the command line, tools, Android, list targets. This is not there anymore on the newer documentation. They don't, there it is. There's exactly what we typed. So anyway, maybe that will give you a head start with it. Um, see you on the other side. Thanks for watching.